we are going to start now. Um, my name is Carsten Baas. I'm uh, the customer success and training engineer EMEA. And today we would like to present you some carrier control certification training. So we would like to encourage all of you to take the exam um, to be to get certified. Um, and this basic training today should help you a little bit passing the exam. So what would be on the agenda today? I will show you um, the installation and deployment options and people of you who have attempted yesterday may see that we are going um, very very fast to a live demo because um, there are not so many prerequisites you need to take care of when you're using a firewall or a UTM device so we are going very fast to the live demo where I show you how to access the carrier control, um, how to define the different network interfaces. So you at least need two. Um, how you assign parameters to the local networks, enforcing security and access policies. Um, how you can configure an automated backup, which is now also possible to back up to an FTP server and not only to same page and how you can create uh, or better say how you can view reports from the Cario statistics and reporting. So we first start with the installation and deployment options. Basically you have three options how to install and use our carrier control. First of all we have a software appliance. Software appliance means you are downloading an ISO image, you put it on a USB stick or you burn a DVD or a CD from this ISO image, you pop it into your uh, designated hardware and all the, the whole hardware will be uh, converted in, um, in a carrier control. So this is one of um, the most important questions I've always getting. So is it possible to install the software appliance on top or side by side with my, with my let's say for example, Carrier Connect? No, with the software appliance, it is not possible as the installation process of the software appliance converts the whole machine into a carrier control appliance. If you would like to have several installations or several systems on one single machine, you should go to the second option, which is virtualization. We have a virtual, virtual appliance um, ready for you to download. Uh, one is for the ESXi environment or for example, when you're using VM player, and we also have a virtualized image for the Microsoft Hyper-V environment. So the virtualization gives you the ability to have several installations side by side on a single machine as the, um, as the different um, installations are virtualized. And the third option is that you can buy the carrier control hardware boxes from us. There is a limitation in some countries um, where you are not able to buy um, those, but um, this will be mentioned on our webpage. We have basically two different boxes. We have a small one, I will call it. It's the 1120. And we have a big one, which is the 3130. Those boxes are really cool they are tested um, so you do not need you have will have no problems when you get those boxes as those boxes are uh, especially designed for our carrier control if you are going to use your own hardware you should better check before if it's compatible um, with our software which brings me directly to the next slide. Um, 
these are the requirements you should take care of when you are going to use your own hardware. You should at least have two network interfaces, uh, which makes perfect sense, as you need one interface facing um, the outside evil world, the internet, and you need one interface facing your internal network, so this is separated. To check compatibility of components, there is a link where you can check if your components you are using um, are compatible. Uh, basically, our Carrier Control uses its own operating system. It's called Carrier OS. That means it's a hardened Linux based on Debian. Hardened Linux means that every unnecessary component which is not necessary to run the carrier control is taken out of the operating system. So it's trimmed down just to its only purpose being a firewall, a UTM solution. So you, But you can check those um, compatibilities for with hardware on the mentioned link. Do not worry, you do not need to uh, pin it down now. Uh, you will get a link after this presentation or after this webinar uh, to a page in our partner portal where you will also find this link. When it comes to the hardware boxes, this is all, always a little bit difficult. Um, we say um, the small box you can use for approximately up to 50 users and the big box can be used up to 300 users. But this is not, let's say, written in stones. Um, the thing is, it always depends what kind of traffic you are facing and what kind of um, services you are needing. You know, you maybe know that VPN um, and tunneling and stuff like this is integrated in our, in our carrier control. So, for example, when you just want to manage your traffic and you do not have any VPN connections in place or something like this, definitely a small box can also go over the 50 users. The advantage of the boxes um, additionally are that the carrier web filter and also the antivirus is already included in the hardware boxes. So there is no need to buy an extra license. Um, those two extensions are already included in, this, in those hardware boxes. If you're going for the virtualized uh, one or if you are going, you're using the software appliance, the Sophos and also the carrier web filter um, is, uh, needs to be licensed separately. From my point of view, I can just give you the tip um, as you are a reseller, show the, uh, try the installation and the trial uh, at your customer with both, op with both options. Um, it is amazing. And also when you, um, when you sell um, a carrier control license, try to sell the antivirus and also the web filter too, because we have, we have seen that the prolongation of the software maintenance uh, the ratio will be higher when people have those extensions. The thing is, when the software maintenance expires, also the Zophos antivirus stops working and also the web filter stops working. And I think um, having no antivirus on your gateway is a, um, is a good selling point for the software maintenance. As I said, I just would like to um, incorporate uh, a little bit my colleague Marino. Um, Marino, could you maybe tell us about the hardware boxes? What are your experiences uh, with the hardware boxes? Um, is the number basically correct, uh, I'm saying? Yes, absolutely. The way I take is this. Uh, uh, we, when we talk about 50 users, so we're actually talking about 50 concurrent users. So, and the same for 300. So if you look, for example, a school where they have a thousand pupils and uh, students uh, and uh, 
the external stuff, you can easily have on the big box thousand users because not all the time you will have the students using access uh, to the internet. So that is a that is quite reasonable to put, for example, a big box in a in a thousand user installation as long as you know that not all thousand will be using the internet or content filtering or internal routing internal for any any point in time. Perfect. Thank so that is concurrent users. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, let's go to the next. So you maybe still think, help, hey carrier, which way should I choose? Box, software appliance, virtualization? Difficult to say. Choose the way you are comfortable with or ask your local sales engineer. Sorry, Marino. But um, the thing is, it always depends um, what your customers want. Some of them are saying, I want a box. Full stop. There is maybe no need for having a, a dedicated box, but some of them want a box. So this is why we are offering a hardware box. The software appliance is basically also something like a box, but the box is built by yourself. If you have already a virtualization uh, or a virtualized environment, you should go for the virtualized version of carrier control because when you're always already familiar with ESXi there is no need to have some software appliance or hardware box because um, you already know how to virtualize and virtualization the beauty of virtualization is you can easily do backups you can easily do snapshots so whenever something went wrong you just click a button and you're back in business um, where you have before you have done something um, before we start um, the installation of carrier control which uh, I'm using like yesterday I'm using um, a VMware image um, I would just like to uh, explain you a little bit the environment we are using here for this training we have all three products, so Carrier Connect, Carrier Control, and Carrier Operator virtualized in an ESXi environment. And we use a root server here in Germany uh, from Webtropia. So we have all, we have an ESXi environment, we have all products installed on the same root server, and Carrier Control is taking care of all the network traffic so when I want to go to my virtualized mail server I can go to my virtualized mail server just by typing in the appropriate URL same for operator or the firewall and this is uh, a small thing I would like to show you because it is new in 8.3 um, we have a reverse proxy now in carrier control 8.3 and maybe some of you do not know what is a reverse proxy? I'm trying to explain you this um, a little bit with um, with some comics, with the comic strip, and afterwards I will transition this into the environment we are using. So maybe you know the Beagle Boys. So the Beagle Boys are imprisoned um, in the in the in a jail. And Bunker Beagle is sitting in cell 250, Bomber Beagle is sitting in cell 251, and Bouncer Beagle is sitting in cell 252. Now there are some visitors. The first one wants to visit Bomber, the second wants to visit Bouncer, and the young lady wants to visit Bunker. So the basic problem in this case is they do not know in which cell those Beagle boys are sitting and of course they cannot access directly to those cells. So what the only thing what they knew is that they are in a jail, in the public jail and the public address of the jail is Jail Street 12 in block 80. So they are coming to this address and now they want to visit the different Beagle boys. So how can they accomplish this? There is a prison guard. The prison guard 
knows where all those nasty boys are sitting. So he can direct the first directly to Mr. Bomber Beagle and the lady to Bunker Beagle and so on. If we now transition this into carrier control environment, and as I said, we are using an ESXi environment where we have all three products installed, the reverse proxy takes care. So whenever you're typing mail.bindbrewing.com, the reverse proxy in the carrier control knows that it now should uh, forward this request to the carrier connect server. Same for the operator, when I just need to type pbx.bindbrewing.com and the reverse proxy um, in our carrier control knows that it should forward it to the internal IP of our carrier operator. So maybe this is some explanation for you how a reverse proxy basically works. Um, and before we start now going to the actions or the activities, so we are going in a live demo. I just would like to ask you if there are some questions. So Marino, would you please be so kind and um, drop in the public chat window so people can ask some questions if they have some. If there are no questions right now, we can just continue. I'll leave the public uh, chat there in case people need to ask questions mm -hmm. and uh, I will take care of answering as we go along and uh, re-summarize by Kasten uh, at the next step. Mm -hmm. Good. So as I mentioned, we are going to uh, we are going into the installation process. So I will bring up my virtual appliance. This is the point where I I just tested it this morning, but as I would like to show you it from the right from the beginning. I'm going here. Don't save. I will put this away. So when you're going to install it in a virtualized environment, you will be first presented after setting this up to choose a language. As we are international today, I will go for English and you just type enter. Then uh, you must um, agree to the license agreement. For this, when you agree, you just tape, type F8. If you say enter and you do not agree, we are finished here. But uh, I think uh, for today we should go on. Then the uh, insta installer shows you the found uh, network interfaces. I, I'm selecting one and as you see here it is asking what which of those interfaces you would like to have as your local interface. So this will be the interface facing to the intranet. I just go for the first one. Now you can assign a static IP, which I strongly recommend you to do when you have it in your environment. As we are here in a test environment, I'm going for DHCP. I press continue. Now it's finalizing the installation. Takes some seconds. Carsten, yes. as we wait for the, the installation to go through, I would like to give some feedback about uh, um, 
what deployment people would like to choose for uh, carry control. For pure testing purposes, uh, you can just use a virtual machine, uh, even sitting on your Windows with iPlay, uh, with a VM player or uh, Fusion, like I'm using on my Mac. Uh, this is for pure testing purposes. If you want to go in a real live environment, uh, you can expect the same security and performance if you're building on top of an existing OS. So some people I've seen, they ask, can I install it on Windows? I put uh, uh, VM player and then I install uh, the software appliance. Yes, for testing purposes, but not in a live and operational environment. Otherwise, you end up exposing the machine to the Internet and you will have no security whatsoever. Absolutely. Thank you. So <clears throat> installation is finished and now it points, it shows you a link where you should, uh, which you should enter in your, in your browser to go for the, uh, to continue the installation and configuration. So I'm switching to my browser and let's see if it's still the valid address. Now you get a pop-up and sorry it's in German but I have here a German um, operating system. Um, the carrier control um, get, generates a self-assigned self -signed certificate and of course the browsers do not know this. So in this case you just need to say go, go uh, continue. I'm going to switch here also in English and I will make it a little bit bigger. And this is for some of you who already know our products um, is a little bit, it's a, it's a new approach. We are going to the activation wizard via um, a web browser and the activation wizard has changed a little bit. So when I go now here to next, it's carrier control is testing the connectivity to the internet and based on your um, on your location um, it is already choosing the time zone. You can change this afterwards if you would like. It also makes it synchronizes with an internet time server and as I see today definitely is a 26 and it's 1125 so I just go next. And here comes the first interesting thing for you um, and also for your customers. We have now incorporated in this activation wizard the possibility to directly ask for a trial license. So, and this is live, I'm going to do it. I click on trial. Oh, sorry. Um, when you click on trial, you now, if you already have a trial license number, you can enter it here. If you do not have a trial license number, you see in the lower right corner, you can see get a trial license number. I just click on it and immediately opens a window. And I'm trying, I hope that I'm getting an email. I'm just typing it in, brewing.com. Nicely done. And I'm now going to my mail account. And let's see if I get an email. Should arrive within, let's say, five minutes, um, between five and ten minutes. When I first tested this, uh, it came pretty quick to my inbox. Let's see if it's going, it's, if it's coming in. Uh, maybe it takes some seconds 
if it takes some seconds um, or some minutes, it's not a problem at all. Um, I can definitely use our real um, installation install already installed environment. But I just would like to show you that it is definitely possible to get a try license right out of this activation visit. So I'm waiting here. Maybe it takes again some seconds. This should be definitely be automated. We can return to this later on. So first I will go to activate in unregistered mode. This is definitely not the best approach as the problem is when you're using an unregistered trial, the integrated software's antivirus will not work, the intrusion prevention system will not work, the carrier control web filter will not work and you are not um, illegible for technical support. Which means during the inst uh, during the testing period, um, you have definitely um, the right to get in contact with our support. But this is only for registered licenses. So as we are still waiting, I can have a sneak look here. Ah, and what do I say? Here we have our trial license number. I just copy it. I go back to my activation with that. Carson, I want yes. to mention that there was a delay because you have enabled possibly uh, the spam repellent on the mail server, which is over 25 seconds. That's Absolutely. why it took that, longer. That could be. So I'm going typing in the capture. I'm going to next. Now it's sending the registration data. Here we have um, allow carrier control to send anonymous usage statistics to carrier te technologies. If you would like to see what is being sent, you can just type on this view sample data. So you see there is nothing private. It's just for statistics so we can see, okay, of what kind of machines it is installed, etc., etc., etc. So I go to next. Justin, can I sure. uh, step in on this? Because I spoke to the head of development for control, Roman Yokol, and he said that data is vital to us because based on that statistic, we can make some judgment how people are using the feature, how many people are using it. So, for example, if we see nobody actually using the IPsec, we, we want to know why. Is it because it's not working, people don't want to use it? So these are very important, uh, inf uh, this is very important information that is coming to us. So if you can enable it, you're not going to give away any sensitive data and it is going to help us to improve the product w uh, without any specific bias. Absolutely. So after the registration, you will be, uh, you will be forwarded to the login page of the carrier control and now the configuration assistant comes up and he would like to help you to um, configure your product so first of all you should start configuring your internet connection and your local work network so you go here you say okay how many internet links do I have if you have more than one interface facing to the internet you can definitely click here two internet links with fail load ba balancing or you can already choose if it should be for link failover so when one interface is going down um, the carry control will switch to the other as i now have only one single internet link i go with this i say next <clears throat> Then it is asking me, okay, what kind of interface is it? Is it an, or which, which kind of interface you want to use? I say the Ethernet, Ethernet 1, I say next. This is the public IP address I'm currently using here. I say next. So it tells me that the Ethernet 
name and is um, the internet link will be the DHCP server. And what do we see here? I made a mistake because the Ethernet, which is faced to the internet, is configured by DHCP server, which means that I've chosen the wrong um, interface. I need to go back. I need to go back because the external one should be this one, the Ethernet 2, and the interface Ethernet should be my local one, as it is here saying LAN. I say next. Sorry, again missed something. Okay, now I go to manual. Um, as a gateway, um, is no need at the moment because you have st already here your IP address. I go next, next, finish. That's it. You can see it here that there are different types of interfaces now. You have an internet interface. This means those interfaces are facing the outside world, the bad, bad internet. You have the trusted local interfaces, which means those are the interfaces facing to your inside network, your internal network. And if you have uh, VPN configured, you also see uh, VPN interfaces. So to have this in a more vital and viral environment, I'm going to leave this installation here. And I'm going to our live system. Any questions so far? Okay, no questions so far. Good. So I will just go here a little bit through the interfaces. As you can see, we have here two WAA, WAN interfaces, so two WAN interfaces facing to the internet. And we have one single internal interface, which is facing to our local intranet. When I'm, and you see that those interfaces facing the internet are configured for load balancing. So basically this means you can define uh, a weight. Um, basically it can be explained like this. When you're saying, for example, here 20 and you say for the second interface uh, 40, um, this is very basic, 20 connections will be routed via this interface and 60 interfaces will be 60 connections will be routed via this interface. To have everything probably set here, I'm doing a double click again. This is the external inter interface. Those information you need to fill in here, you will get them when you have a static IP, you get from your ISP, you get all the necessary information. So what you need to fill in in the IP address field, what you need to fill in in the mask field, what you need to fill in in the gateway field, and also what you need to fill in in the DNS server field. So basically these, all these information will be given you from your ISP. Basically you can say the IP address is the public IP address you have uh, the ISP has given to you and the gateway is also given by your ISP. There's a special specialty. Um, I think most mostly I've seen this here in Germany when you have a static IP from the German Telekom. Sometimes you have a problem when you have the web filter activated as the web filter is um, doing a lot of DNS requests, 
it could be that with some ISP, some internet providers, your connection gets really slow because normally the DNS server of your ISP should be filled in here. Um, but some ISPs have some regulations. So when there are too many requests to their DNS uh, in a given time frame, um, they reduce the requests and your internet connection slows down. What a uh, workaround for this could be that you are using here a DNS server uh, named, this is a DNS server of Google. So as we all know, as Google is already and always collecting data, they do not care if there are too many DNS requests to their DNS. You can specify a special rule if you do not want to have all your traffic going um, over this DNS server, you can create a special rule only for the web filter because the web filter is requesting Zvolo. You can find this in our knowledge base. Just type slow internet connection and you will be immediately uh, the appropriate KB article will be shown immediately. But you can will also find the link to this special knowledge base article on the partner portal page I'm creating after this webinar. So as we say, we are going here for um, these two interfaces for load balancing. The thing is one of the interfaces is a little bit grayed out. This means actually there is no second IP configured for this um, internet. If so, it can't be used for load balancing. But for showing purposes, we have created this second WAN, A -A WAN interface. Uh, otherwise, you cannot show that you can do um, a failover or a load balancing. You even can go here on advanced. But those things will be definitely covered in some, some advanced webinar. There is one important thing. If you would like to use things for load balancing, if you want to use interfaces for load balancing, I'm going to bandwidth management in QoS. And you see that there are some attentions down here. So what does it mean? This means before you have not defined the speed of your internet connection, this bandwidth management can't work properly because it does not know this as it does not know the speed of your internet connection, it can't do bandwidth management. So as you can do bandwidth management based on um, on the down or upstream um, size, you can do it also on a uh, based on per percentage. Um, it needs to know your bandwidth speed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going here in the lower right corner, going to change, and then it shows it offers me the possibility to enter my speed of my internet interfaces. So please keep in mind when you are having. Uh, when you are having um, an internet connection and let's say your ISP says you have a 100 Mbit internet connection, not the full 100 Mbit will, re um, will come to your, to your office. So this is why we say, please say here that um, use, um, use a value which is 20% under the contracted bandwidth um, to, give, to give you an overview what are the typical values are you see in the lower right corner you see a link you can click on and this is I'm going this is what I'm going to do now and it will open you it will show you a pop-up I'm have a pop-up blocker here so it can't open the page immediately but it shows you the link to the knowledge base article and I'm clicking on it and here we have a list of let's say the most common internet connection speeds. So you see, even if you have a 100 Mbit, please be
be a little bit um, go go 20% under so you are at 79 um, cause this will be definitely more realistic what is coming to your internet so I'm going back here I say OK and I'm now going to enter something let's say 97 97 97 oops 97 97 I say OK and you see now immediately those warnings disappear any questions so far Uh, we are all in hand, Carson. We have just one more question from Simone Ferrari, which I'm reading and trying to find the answer for him. Okay, the question is: but you are welcome to chip in. The last one. hosted by different ISP. Obviously, I have different public IPs and domain name associated at every IP. In case of failover, I suppose that connection to my web or mail website going down. On for uh, from inside to web. Simon, I'm not quite sure about your question, but maybe as we are uh, as we are collecting the questions, um, I think Marino will be happy to contact you directly, and we can post this question if it's interesting. Also for the others, um, we can post it in a separate uh, box on in the partner portal. I briefly can answer that one. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm assuming that uh, Simone is uh, is going to host uh, websites inside the network, and if you have different IP addresses, yes, correct, you will lose the connectivity. So you need to use virtual uh, IP address and uh, the DNS, possibly referring to uh, multiple IP addresses uh, across two separate IP uh, to to ISP. Okay, thank you. There's one important thing we um, we are seeing very often when it comes to the local area network interfaces. People are entering a gateway here. This is definitely not okay. There is no gateway on LAN interfaces. I know that people of you which may have used who may have used only some router uh, like fritzbox or something like that there is some reflex that you need that you that you want to enter a gateway um, on this page but you have here you have a utm you have a firewall which is um, which is um, dividing everything so the lan interface should definitely not have any gateway insert uh, inserted so just keep this in mind um, this needs to be empty so I say cancel next one um, what I'm going to show you is the traffic rules and also the content filter rules I'm now switching over to traffic rules we have a basic set of traffic rules already in place um, those are um, rules we think um, are basically necessary and those rules are also important for um, content connecting to your web interface so it wouldn't make sense um, to block the access to the web administration of your carrier control because otherwise you will not be able to configure your carrier control um, the maybe you have seen it the appropriate port for getting to the web administration interface is the 4081 so 4081 this is a port um, where our carrier connect uh, sorry carrier control is listening when you want to access the web administration there are also some other ports which are um, important in case for example you would like to use the VPN functionality um, there are different approaches how you can use VPN with carrier control 
let's say the easiest one is using our Cario Control VPN client. Um, for this, you need to have the port 4090 for a TCP and UDP open, because the Cario Control VPN client uses those ports and those two protocols um, for the connection to Carrier Control. The Carrier Control VPN client um, is available for Mac OS, it's available for Windows and also for Linux. Um, it is not available for mobile devices, but as we have also IPsec now in our um, Carrier Control, it is also uh, possible to connect and to use VPN with carrier control using any already built-in VPN functionality in your products like an iPhone, iPad or even if you have a Mac OS 10 or a Windows uh, machine and you do not want to install the VPN client you can use um, the already incorporated and implemented VPN functionalities, but I would strongly recommend to use the our carrier control VPN client because I will just show you how easy it is. I'm just stopping my connection. Um, you just fill in the server name, you just fill in your username, you just fill in your password, and that's it. You click on connect. Done. Now you are connected to your firewall. You do not believe me? I can show you that. When I look here in VPN clients, I have an overview that I'm dialed in via a VPN client. And when you look at the client IP, you may remember this was also the public IP shown in my um, carrier control virtual um, virtual image I have been installing. This is my public IP address I'm using here with my computer. So I would like to encourage you whenever it is possible use our Cario VPN client. The Cario VPN client is already and the VPN functionality is already built in in our Cario control. It's not an extra license you need to purchase. The VPN server is already included. If you are going to use the uh, built-in um, built VPN services of your operating systems or for example if you would like to connect your carrier control to some other UTM device like a Zixel or a Fortinet or something like that, you can use um, an IPsec tunnel. Um, basically, today we are uh, supporting several uh, IKE ciphers for using um, for using IPsec, which is Blowfish 256, AES 192, 3DES, and AES 256. So those are the ciphers we are using um, for the IPsec. So it can easily be connected to another uh, to another firewall. I would like to show you now some actions, some activities, some typical actions you are going to do and you are definitely need to do with um, with carrier control. So I have created three activities. Um, one is adding a user, then adding a bandwidth rule, so restricting bandwidth, and adding a content content rule. So those are the typical things you need to do. So let's start first with creating a user. You just go to the configuration pane and go to users. And as you can see, there are already three users uh, generated. Um, those are created in the local user database. You, of, you can, of course, bind your carrier control also to a directory service. 
like an Active Directory or an Open Directory. Um, how you can do this and what things you need to take care will be definitely covered in some future training. So um, we are going to do it today with the local user database. So I'm going to create a new user. But before I'm going to do this, you see in the lower right corner, you see two buttons. One is template and one is import. When you click on the import, this would be the appropriate button you need to use when you have you've been connected to a directory service what we are at the moment we are not connected to a directory service so the import button at this moment is a little bit useless but the template button could be interesting in the template button you can define a user template so whenever you create a new user um, and you let's say have um, all the um, all all of those things uh, which every new user new user needs to have, you can define it here in a template. So um, as default, the template is looks like this. So you have no access to the administration administration, which makes sense. Um, and you can define also additional rights. So one of the maybe most interesting additional rights is user can connect using VPN. So when you have your users also remote workers and usually when you create a new user you want to give him also the ability to dial in via VPN. You can already click the button here so it will be uh, used in the template so when you create a new user this is already ticked you can also define a quota so if you would like to def uh, limit it on a daily on a weekly or on a monthly base how many traffic a user should or is allowed to create you can let's say go for enable a daily limit and you can here now split it between download and upload. So you can say um, only download. He's not allowed to download more than, let's say, 20 gigabyte. Or you can say he's not allowed to upload more than a given amount of um, gigabytes. Or you can even be nasty and say megabytes. This is what we are not going to do. Um, if you are enabling this, you can also create some messages which are created. So whenever the quota is exceeded, you can say block any further traffic. You can say don't block further traffic, but you can limit the bandwidth according to the bandwidth management settings only. So you can say um, you trim it down when the quota is exceeded. Um, that the bandwidth for this user will be limited. You Or you can just say notify user by email when quota is exceeded. We are not using this at the moment. And you could go to preferences, web scanning uh, options. You can here define objects which should not be uh, scanned when a user is doing it. This could be, for example, interesting for people who are um, developers and are frequently working with Java applets or ActiveX, uh, ActiveX things, objects. So it may maybe make sense for them to unblock and not and or not let uh, the web filter scanning this as it may be uh, causes some problems when they are developing. You can also define the language option when somebody is logging in to his uh, user statistics because every, every user can log into his own user statistic and of course when somebody needs to authorize himself uh, at the firewall. So basically you can say that every connection from your inter intranet 
when they want to open some web pages, they must authenticate themselves against the firewall. Otherwise, when they do not authenticate, you will not have the ability um, to count the user statistics and the user traffic. So you can say, let uh, the language be browser, browser detected. This is, by the way, why my um, when I logged in, it showed me um, it showed me in a German language because I'm using here a German browser. So this can be defined in the user template. The user template can definitely be overwritten. I will say here now cancel and I'm going to add a new user. And here it is asking me, should it be based on the template I've created or do I would, do I would like to have a separate configuration? As you can see, as at the moment, the new user will be based on the template. There is no possibility to, um, to change something at the rights, quota or preferences. But what I would like to do here with this user is um, a custom configuration because I would like to assign him the right to have VPN access and I would like to set a daily transfer quota of one gigabyte. So I'm ticking the box here and immediately you see I can access those tabs. So I'm going here. I will call him Bastian and his full name is Bastian Schweinsteiger and I will type here famous football player and I can give him an email address. This is by the way necessary if he is exceeding the quota um, he can get some information. I'm going here um, let's say Basti at brewing.com. It should be stored in the internal user database. I'm defining a password for him. So the general information is done. What additional things I would like to do is that I'm giving him the right to use a VPN connection. I'm typing it here. I say, OK, VPN connection. And as I said, I would set a daily transfer quota of one gigabyte. So I'm going here. I say enable daily limit. And I say all quota and I say it should be one gigabyte. Here's nothing I need to do. And here is also nothing I need to do. I say OK and the user Bastian Schweinsteiger is created. Just to prove that um, the VPN is working um, and also I can have a look here. Account status that I can see that he is enabled. I will switch to my VPN client again. I will stop it. I will go here for Bastian. I type in the password and I say connect. And that's it. That easy. You just, you just tick the box that he should be able to have a VPN connection. There is no, no credentials um, the guy, uh, the person needs to know, only the server name, only the username and only his password and that's all and he's connected. Just to prove that it is, that he is connected and it's not a fake, I'm going to the status and I'm looking here for the VPN clients and here you can see Bastian is connected. You even can go here and do a right click and force a disconnection. 
Now the user is disconnected. And you can also see it here. The connection was closed. That's e that is how easy it is to create a user and granting him some access to some uh, some um, services. The next thing thing I would like to show you is bandwidth management and QoS. So the given um, the given example is I would like to assign some something some bandwidth rule to a specific user. Um, call, and I want the the aim is I want to limit his down and upload. So what I'm going to do is I'm just clicking add, and I say new rule, and I should give this rule a name. And I say Bastian, not much bandwidth. Forgive me if I'm not that creative. Then I'm going to say. This should be apply always. Now I can say what kind of traffic. And I'm going here and I say I want a specific user and I want Bastian. So I'm going to say, okay, traffic. This is maybe a little bit misleading, but it means traffic from Bastian. This should be limited. And I'm going here to download and I say do not exceed one megabyte. And I also see say for the download it should not exceed one megabyte. And that's it. I can even make a tick box here so it will be it will be recorded in the traffic charts and when I now say apply that's it. So Bastian will have only a limit of the bandwidth from one megabyte per second and an upload limit from of one megabyte per second. And this is how easy it is. Um, you see here is an already given, uh, given rule we have predefined. This is for our carrier operator or any voice over IP so that at least 24 kilobytes of the internet connection of the connection should be um, should be reserved for whenever the carrier control recognizes and detects zip traffic. As with all rules you should keep in mind and this is not only for the bandwidth management it's also for the content filter and the traffic rules. Rules are always applied from top to bottom. So you all, when maybe a rule some maybe works not that well as you would like uh, it to work, you should always keep in mind that rules are, um, are handled from top to bottom. So maybe uh, that it is sometimes necessary to change the order of the rules as and sorry that I repeat it again, but it can't be repeated uh, enough. Rules are handled from top to bottom. Questions so far? Looks good. Now I would like to show you a content filter rule. Again, here are some already predefined rules. So, uh, for example, you do not need to take care about updates of Windows Update and also carry your fil uh, web filter um, is already, um, already predefined. What I would like now to configure is a rule that forbids Facebook. And this is definitely a rule um, lots of you um, will have uh, incorporated in their firewalls. So I'm going to here, I'm going add and I say block Facebook.
So it should always be blocked. And now I'm going to detected content. And the detected content I'm going to add. And it will be a URL. So I'm going here and say facebook.com. As Facebook is also um, can also be reached via HTTPS. Do not forget to tick the box here that also the HTTPS connections should be handled by this content rule. So what you here see that is that our content rule is not only detecting content in plain HTTP streams, you can it can also detect um, content in HTTPS streams. So I'm going and say here, OK. I say OK. Now I could say as the source, I could define any source. Or again, let's say Bastian. Bastian is doing so many, is spending so much time on Facebook. I just would like to have Bastian um, uh, I would just would like to have a restriction for Bastian, so he cannot access Facebook anymore. And I say OK. And act now I need an action, of course. The action will be that I'm denying it. But here I can also lock the traffic. So whenever Bastian tries it again and again, this will be locked. What I then can do is I can do an HTTP action, which means I can redirect him to some page. Let's, for example, say our company page. So whenever Bastian wants to go to Facebook, he will be redirected to his company page. And maybe he is clever enough and is not asking any admin, hey, I want to use Facebook, why I'm redirected to my company page. But you can also go here and say, Bastian, no Facebook for you anymore. So this page, this text will be displayed when Bastian is going to try to access Facebook. He will be faced with this um, text. And at least at this moment, he should understand that it is not allowed for him to go to Facebook. When we are already here in the uh, content filter, you can also define enable forbidden words filtering. So as a standard, pornography and virus is, um, is activated, but you can add Additionally, things you can say select an existing, oops, cancel. You can define a new group and let's say um, companies. And then you can define the properties and you can define what forbidden words are also um, applying here. We will definitely have um, an advanced webinar which is only doing these content filter rules and traffic rules. So you get more and more familiar with those rules and using those rules. I'm now going to the carrier web filter. Um, the web filter is can also be defined that you are defining here some URLs which should be filtered out and which should be which should be categorized. We also have here the advanced settings uh, where we have already some suspicious connections. So these are the typical peer-to-peer connections which are which we are assuming are suspicious. 
So I'm going to reset it, switching over to traffic rules. Any questions so far? Sounds good. So um, you have definitely several more options here in the carrier control and it just came to my mind before we go to the traffic rules. We have here definitely the locks. So in the locks you will see some information. Um, it's pretty, pretty the same um, things like you have in our other products in the config lock you would see any configurations that have been done in the carrier control you see the connections there is definitely not so much at the moment because we uh, I'm this this control is not talking too much to the outside world what may be interesting for you is the security lock because in the security lock you also see the intrusion alerts so here you can see IPS whenever you would like to make uh, an exclamation when for example maybe you are going to some page and the page does not load properly maybe the IPS filter has jumped into into a place and is detecting some let's say suspicious content but you are sure you would like to open this page and you want to navigate uh, through such a page and you know that it is trustworthy just go to the security log and have a look um, at the security log and look what if you can find the page which has been blocked um, or where the content is not loading and then you need to make some exclusion so you can see here a rule ID so when you see you need to find out the rule ID and then you can make an exclusion also a very interesting um, area on this is the status there you can see the active connections so you can see that there are lots of connections here at the moment um, the carrier operator service <coughs> is as I said um, the carrier operator is also running on this on this ESXi you see the web administration login and so on you can see here the VPN connections you can even see user statistics here so you have a brief overview how many um, how many traffic was uh, created by these by the different users and you can see also um, what percentage is what what percentage of his quota is already reached there are the traffic charts so you can also see how often some rules are hidden you see alert messages here you have it is flooded at the moment with that the WANN2 is offline. Interesting is also the system health where you can see the actual CPU usage and RAM usage and one interesting thing as you may already know our uh, carrier control a little bit longer what would you do and this is an, an, a question I would throw uh, into the round how can I access now my carrier control via SSH any ideas yeah shift and system help exactly so in the former versions you go to system health and then you had a button here with more actions um, when you shift clicked on this more actions button um, then you could activate the SSH. This has changed a little bit. You go out of the system health, now you click the shift button and you click on system health and ta-da! You can see the enable SSH button. Um, 
So it's a little bit different from older versions. Before you have been going here and you see more actions and with shift click it activated the enable SSH. When you Now you need to shift click and then click on system health and the enable SSH button is available. We also have the IP tools here which is very comfortable so you can directly do a who is a DNS lookup, a trace route or a ping. So let's have a look for bindbrewing.com. And you have the result here and you can see that bindbrewing.com is registered for Cario Technologies and the admin name and the admin owner is Julius Stolerman. You can also do a trace route and you can see the trace route to carrier.de. So last but not least, let's assume we have configured our carrier control properly, everything is working, everything is in place and now we would like to back it up and there is another point which will follow afterwards but okay before we back up I would like because Marino is just pointing me uh, via a chat um, some of you always uh, uh, maybe remember those traffic routes when you said add um, we had no wizard nothing special you can use now you can even use a wizard helping you to create a new rule so I just type here Merino rule and I would say okay allow something then I say next and I add a selected user and I'm going for Bastian I'm going next the destination should be I let's say the firewall I say next at a service let's say Citrix finish so this is how the traffic rule rules wizard can help you and we have here a question is IP geolocation available for rules no it is not but this is something you should definitely suggest uh, and thank you Vincent for this for this question as I would like as I would always like you um, if whenever you think you there is some something missing in our carrier control and you would like to have a feature or something like that when you go to the dashboard you see in the lower right corner you see the suggest idea button whenever you click on this suggest idea button you will be forwarded to a user's voice page where you can uh, vote for existing suggestions or you can make your own suggestion so let's assume we have everything in place everything is configured as we would as we want it to be configured now what is the approach to save my configuration so basically there are two different approaches the a manual one and an automated one first of all let's I will show you the manual one when you're in the dashboard you see in the lower right corner you see a button the configuration assistant you click on that and then you can say export your configuration I can click on it and now it asks me what should be exported you can say the configuration and you can also include all the SSA certificates and you, the DHCP leases this is by the way interesting I say here console because with the configuration assistant you also can import configurations so whenever you need to set up a second um, a second carrier connect you just export the exp uh, configuration of your uh, already configured 
carrier control and can just import it via the configuration assistant. The second approach, how you can do it, you will find it under the advanced options. You see a tab which is named configuration backup. Um, you have two ways how to backup your configuration. One is you can back it up to same page. When you have a same page account, you just fill in the password, uh, the username and password, and the, then your configuration file will be backed to same page. Or you can do it now to an FTP server. So when you have an FTP server in place, you just define the username and the password and the URL, and then you can do a backup. This backup will be done daily. I just click now here on backup. So every 24 hours, a backup will be done. You also can say import configuration. Here you can upload an already existing configuration and then import it again. That's it so far for today. Um, I know I have um, the webinar was set for two and a half hours, but I always like to have some spare time and some time so I would like now to give you the ability to ask some further questions and we definitely have here a question from Detlef. Detlef is asking how will licenses be counted? Basically licenses will be counted every user who wants to access a service on the Cario control is counted as a user. So when you are authenticating yourself against the carrier control, user license is counted. And before we go to the next question, thank you, Marino, for the reminder. Um, I have forgotten one really important thing, and this is the carrier control statistics. You can monitor basically everything. You just need to keep in mind that in some countries you need to inform your employees that you can monitor everything because you can go down and trim it down on a complete user base. So I can see that Pam Beasley is the, the top requested web categories of her are IT and information communication. You have a summary report where you can see the user statistics and the and the traffic you can see users by traffic so you see that Jim Halpert is uh, is causing a lot of traffic and maybe it makes sense to limit it, his bandwidth a little bit you can see the visited sites and you can see the web categories the most used web categories if I go here back again to user by traffic, you can even trim it down to the different um, protocols. So let's have a look if somebody has used peer to peer. No. Remote access. Let's go for something really obvious. That's www. And so you see Peter Gibbons um, has lots of caused lots of traffic for uh, web traffic. Let's have a look at Peter Gibbons directly. So we are curious what he has, where he has been. And we go to Peter Gibbons. Ah, and that's okay. He's more, uh, most of the time he's on information and communication. We can even go down and can see what he has visited, what web pages he has visited and what kind of protocol he has used. So whenever you are thinking of um, implementing Cario control in some customer environment, show them the user and statistics and I think um, you won the heart of every CEO and CFO. We have 
One additional question here from Marino. Yes, hi. Probably it's easier if we go instead of typing. Uh, regarding uh, the question from that left, uh, all IP addresses are actually counted. Uh, each pass, each individual uh, has uh, five IP addresses, but it's most likely that uh, no all IP addresses would be used, and this is about concurrent users as well. So if you have a spare service running in the background, definitely can be used uh, against uh, a specific user license, but they don't, they don't need to be assigned to a specific user license. Okay. And uh, also the question from Fraser, if I have access to network, but I do not authenticate via carrier, um, can I still access to other services such as uh, email by a client? Yes, you can, absolutely. There is no reporting done. That's no problem whatsoever. So thank you very much again for attempting. Uh, thank you for your patience. And I hope this webinar could help you for the certification exam. Again, all additional information and all the stuff will be found on the partner portal. Our marketing team will send all the registered users a link to the appropriate page so you can see these resources and have the additional information. And also a recording of this webinar will be posted in the partner portal.